Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this update for global stocks and commodities for the 3rd of November. Uh, it's been building for some time now, uh, but finally the US market has broken out uh, very cleanly and very emphatically during the week. And, um, you know, that's I guess that's the big story, despite all of the negatives that are out there um, that have been well publicized. Uh, you've always got to go with what the market is doing, and the market has now basically defied um, the majority of opinion and uh, has probably started a new uptrend. It's been um, consolidating now for quite some time, and um, it would appear as though a new leg upwards has started, as much as that doesn't seem all that logical. All right, let's jump into it. Um, the surprising thing to me is is not that stocks have broken out because I think there's the circumstances for that um, has been there for some time. But uh, as you know, particularly from last week, um, I was quite cautious and concerned about a short-term correction in the gold sector because of what was going on in the futures market. But it would appear that um, the potential downside that I thought could have unfolded in the gold sector uh, looks pretty unlikely now, I must say. Gold is much stronger than I expected. It's really defying the situation in the futures market. And whilst um, a bit of disruption is always uh, possible, um, it certainly looks like um, we may have seen the lows in the gold sector at this stage. Uh, portfolio analyst last week, we just continued on just identifying uh, lots of great opportunities in, in Australia and, uh, and in America. Um, it's probably the most exciting time that I can recall for Australian companies that are um, working out on a global stage and have got really cutting edge technologies. Um, so I'm extremely enthused about the future for uh, a lot of Australian companies. Now, the American market, uh, the S&P was up uh, yet another 45 points. That makes it four weeks in a row. Uh, it was 1.5%. And um, it's basically confer confirmed that uh, that long-term breakout, uh, as we'll look at in a minute. It was really a combination on Friday of uh, some good growth numbers for October. Also, um, earnings reports are coming through uh, well and truly uh, good enough. And there was also some more positive uh, manufacturing data out of China. So all three of those things combined for uh, a very solid session on, uh, on Friday night to cap off what was already a pretty positive week. The US dollar uh, eased a bit further, down to 97.23. And of course, we had the Fed uh, cutting rates by another quarter percent uh, during the week, but also indicating that um, future uh, rate cuts were probably not as likely as some people thought. Um, the 10 year yield uh, ended up the week at 1.71. So let's take a look at the charts. And we'll start first of all with the, this is a big picture. This is a monthly chart. So here's the bottom in 2002. Here's the bottom in the GFC. And you can see um, we've now basically got uh, another. Um, another breakout, if you look at this period uh, through really from this peak here, which was in January of 2018, I mean, you could argue that this has really been just one big consolidation and now we've, uh, we've finally broken out of it. But we'll get a bit more detail when we look at the, um, <coughs> the daily chart, excuse me. Um, so there you can see, basically, we jumped above that resistance line uh, on... Um, on Monday, and where I was able to uh, basically hold it and then really surge away on Friday. And it becomes uh, more obvious when you actually put this on a weekly chart. Uh, you can see the breakout uh, really quite clearly there. So we've been in this latest uh, consolidation uh, since July. So that's about uh, four months, uh, four or five months. So that's the situation in the US. The breadth is good. If we look at the, uh, the Russell 2000 for small caps, we can see that that's also, whilst it's not at new all-time highs, it's um, certainly looking quite positive, and, uh, and so is the NASDAQ as well. So it's, um, it's good news all around in the US. Uh, US dollar, 
still in uptrend at a medium to longer term picture view, um, but it's right at the bottom end at the moment. And that may be the thing that sort of holds gold back a bit. If we do continue this uptrend in the US dollar, then that'll put pressure on the gold price. So that may sort of hold things back a little bit. But look, uh, as always, I advocate going with what is, not what you think should should be or what logic would dictate. Just trade it as it comes. Uh, use the balance of probabilities to best effect. And to me, that's always the most successful way of attacking the market. All right, turning to Aussie stocks. Uh, our dollar uh, rose a little bit as a consequence of the US dollar going down. So we're back just above 69 cents. But as we'll see, we're still below the long-term downtrend line. Our index was down by 70 points, down by 1% on the week, but I, I'm assuming that we'll get quite a decent uh, uh, pullback or quite a decent bounce on uh, on Monday. There's really nothing to add. I, I've you know I've said it all. There's only so many ways I can I can slice the uh, the cake, and that is the the most of the top 100 are not going to give you the best results or the best reward for risk, in my opinion. It's all about the small caps. A lot of people shy away from small caps because they immediately think that they're, they've got to be higher risk. But that's actually not the case. I think the earnings growth around a lot of small to medium cap stocks is a lot more predictable and you can have a lot more confidence in predicting um, the long-term cash flows than you can from some of the bigger cyclical stocks. Um, that uh, you know the people have been pouring into as well. So I know that runs contrary to um, to logical thinking, but it's just the way that it is. So we'll look at the uh, ASX 200. So you can see basically we we had a pretty decent down day on Wednesday, and um, I think we'll we'll probably get a rebound and. Head back above 6,700, I would expect uh, on Monday. But where to from there? I think the index, as I've been saying, is going to struggle because I think the banks are going to struggle. I just can't see the catalyst for bank share prices to go up from here. And, um, you know, we've already had uh, some dividend cuts coming through. If there's any more, then the whole banking sector starts to lose its appeal. Um, now, just turning to gold while I'm here. Oh, I forgot the Australian dollar. So there, we've had a pretty decent bounce back, but you can see there's there's quite a long-term downtrend line that we're still sitting below. We've managed to make it, just made it back to the 200-day moving average. Um, so I think we're going to find resistance there, definitely for the Australian dollar. All right, so this is gold on a weekly chart. And I was expecting that we would come down into this area down here, down around 1450, which would have been uh, the bottom of the consolidation. And, and look, that still could happen, but it's looking less likely now because the circumstances were certainly there with the futures market so imbalanced to the long side that everything was set up for gold to come off another $50, $60. Uh, it didn't. And uh, we're now getting into a seasonal uh, time of strength. This is the strongest seasonal time of the year for gold and gold stocks. So um, that is more likely to, uh, to outweigh. So there we, there we are on the daily chart for, uh, for gold. Turning to GDX, um, you can see that it was pretty much flat for the week. Um, but it's not falling as I thought it might do, but basically down here into this uh, area between $24 and $25. So we're currently up at $28 at the moment. So GDX holding up quite nicely. So just to summarize on precious metals, gold was up $10. Um, we've got seasonality um, kicking in, and we've also got earnings season starting off on Tuesday. And that those two things combined may be sufficient to offset this big imbalance in the futures market that would normally uh, correct itself out. But it could just be that the, the buying that's going to come into gold because of the seasonal buying patterns, we're into the holiday season, and um, 
the biggest demand for gold is not investment demand. The biggest demand for gold is for jewellery. And it actually makes up 50% of total demand or more than 50%. And that's been the situation for a long, long time. Um, so we're coming into a, a peak uh, buying season for, uh, for the Western society. And uh, we've also got earnings reports starting on Tuesday with, um, with Newmont. There is every reason to expect that those earnings reports are going to significantly beat expectations if you look at um, the fact that the miners would have been getting a much higher gold price quarter on quarter. Their costs have probably stayed stable. And that means the um, it's a big lift to um, to earnings, and and from what I've seen, the that big surge in earnings is just not in the share price. It's just not being expected. So I think those couple of things together uh, could be a really uh, potent mix for uh, for the gold sector. So a little bit surprised by the strength, but at the end of the day, trade what is, not what you think should be, not what's logical. Just trade what is. And uh, that's where the best results will be. Other commodities, copper was down slightly, hasn't really done much for six months, as we'll see in a minute. And crude oil uh, was also pretty steady, around 56.2. There's the copper chart. So we've really not moved since uh, since the start of May. There's spot nickel, also holding up uh, extremely well for because of the reasons that I've elaborated on before. And just to wrap things up, by far the best reward for risk for me is in is in growth stocks, higher growth stocks. As long as you don't pay too much based on valuation, um, and also you don't you don't buy them when they're technically overbought, because we're seeing quite a pullback in a lot of the high growth, high tech names, um, Wise Tech Global, uh, Altium, Appen, Afterpay Touch, all those sort of stocks are all pulling back from being excessively overbought. And that's really a global trend. That's not just Australia. It's not just those stocks. It's a global trend. When those stocks get ahead of themselves, they get a fairly significant kick in the pants. And we've seen that in a lot of the tech stocks in America. Many of the small to mid, mid-sized stocks are, uh, are off probably 30 35% over the last few months. So as long as you avoid those technical extremes and you don't pay absolutely ridiculous valuations, then um, I think there is a lot more reward and a lot less risk than a lot of traditional stocks. Portfolio analysts this week, uh, I'm going to be looking at what's promising in America because there are some exciting stories in America as well. Um, So that'll complement what we're doing in Australia. There's my contact details for anyone that is not a member. And just a reminder, the Portfolio Analyst two-week trial is uh, is available for anyone that would uh, like to have a look at that service. It's a lot of really good education and perspective as well as uh, recommendations. That's it for this week. Cheers.